So in this problem, what we're going to be dealing with, so at the beginning of the unit, I made you draw a canary. So canary versus finch. I'm going to draw both diagrams. I'm not going to label anything yet. So for the first problem we're going to do, so for number one, we're going to go and we have our circle. And then we're going to have the beak sticking out of the skull of the bird. And notice there's a little gap underneath and also above. So as I was saying in class today, there's a forehead. That's why it's a canary. To show you the difference with the finch. Okay. We have our circle. And I'm going to draw it how it is in the book. Finches usually would be rotated above. So this is a finch if you're looking at him upside down and I should aim it at the green circle. Here's my circle. We're going to go like this. We're going to give him no forehead. Notice there's a gap over here. This is like the bottom of his beak. Like if his eyes were right here. This is the top of its head. And notice no forehead. Unlike over here, there is a gap on top and bottom. Canary, finch. These two lines are called secants. These are secants. They touch the circle twice. This one's a secant. Touches twice. This only touches once. That's a tangent. So let's label this problem, the one on the left, number one. This will be my number two for later. Okay, number one, staring at your book. So we have an X here on the top. Z. Y is right here. T is the pointy part of the beak, the tip of the beak. W is right here. Okay, now just like in class, I'm going to use four colors to color code things. Okay, YT, which is right here in purple. YT is going to be six. In green, the other part of the beak, WT, will be seven. And right now, you're, those in the morning class will realize it. A hey, correction, I was telling you the wrong thing in the morning. So all the nerves from being on in live streaming and all that. So this pink part right here is 12. And notice the part I actually left blue, this is the line right here. This is my little X. This is what I'm going to be looking for. Okay. So I want you to imagine these birds. You stick your hand inside their cage. They don't know you. They got a pointy beak and they have a lot of strength in their beak. They can crack through things that are very difficult. They can crack through nuts and things like that. They poke through pieces of wood. So if you if you were to stick your finger in there, in all probability, you're going to end up saying, ow, after the bird bites you. Well, not bites you, but sort of, well, sort of bites you. Uses his beak to sort of cause some harm. So again, you're going to say, ow. And you may even say it twice. During class, I on accident said that this was going to be an eye. That's not the case. We need to focus on the bird's beak. Okay. So notice, let's start with the pink and the green part. The O would be for the outside. The outside part is the 7. So we have 7. We're going to multiply by the whole length of the whole line. The whole thing would be 12 and also 7. 12 plus 7. On this bottom blue purple side the outside part is six so here's my six the whole thing is x plus six so now we need to combine like terms well this is 19 times seven equals over here i have to distribute so i have to do this and that's chiquito my parakeet i was talking about birds and here you have one for reals plus 36 Grab the calculator, because I can't do 7 times 19 off the top of my head. He was silent for Math 3, and he just heard about birds in Math 2, and he starts talking. 6x plus 36. I subtract 36. Subtract 36. From here on, this should be review. You should know how to do this by this point in Math 2. Okay, I divide by 6, divide by 6, it's okay to get a decimal, this is why we're doing this. 
Because if it's a decimal, there'd be like no way for you to be able to guess. Yes, I got a decimal. And I got that X is equal to 16.17. Okay. I'm going to show you something because as I'm looking in the book over here, the teacher's manual, I see a fraction. This one seven, by the way, is not exact. This is for less than seven from unit eight. Excuse the other video. I'm processing stuff on another computer. This, by the way, what the actual, the screen shows me is a bunch of one sixes. What I can do on the calculator, however, if you have a graphing calculator, I go to math, that's what we're doing. I want to change that decimal to fraction. I go math, option one. It tells me it's this. It tells me there's a six on the bottom. So you should be able to match up. I know that there's a 16, right? So that'd be 16. And over here it says that there's a six on the bottom. So I'm going to do 16 times six is what? Oh, it's 96. And notice it says 97 up there. So if you if you gave the cashier $97 but the thing cost 96, you know your change is one, right? So 16 and 1 sixth. These are the equivalent to each other. And hopefully you'd be able to use the calculator by any means necessary on the test to figure out because this might be what is listed. But this is the one that you would get with the algebra. Now for the problem with the finch. Let's see if my parakeet's going to be quiet enough. So let's label this guy. We're going to have an A. We're going to have a B. D over here. And C. We're going to label this part X plus 4. I'm going to leave that part green in a second. This outside part in blue will be X. And in pink... The part that's different, the part that has hits the forehead of the finch, will be 10. These are both songbirds, by the way. What you're hearing, that's a parakeet from the parrot family. Curvy beak for parakeet, pointy for these guys. It'll still hurt you. That finch beak seems thicker than my parakeet's beak. The parakeet is nice. It's not going to hurt that much, but still, you're going to feel something. You would still say ow. Because notice there's an outside part here. And you can figure out the whole part. But notice there's only one chunk over here. So what you're going to do there. Because there's only an outside. You're going to say oh. And you're going to say oh again. Okay. Which if you're looking in the book for a formula. You're going to see something like this. You're going to see we're using this twice. O squared. Okay so let's do the top part. The outside part is x. On that blue and green part if I put it together it's going to be this X plus X plus 4 so I'm going to do X plus X plus 4 equals I have to use 2 I because notice I've been multiplying two things and two things right and all our things on lesson 7 well my two things I'm going to use this 10 twice you can put 10 times 10 or just put 10 squared here's a hundred X plus X is 2x plus 4. You can't go further than that. They're not like terms. We can, however, distribute in. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 4 is 4x. And I continuously remind you, and to have some of us who have native roots, especially in Mexico or other countries like Guatemala, El Salvador, and things of that nature, that our ancestors, or people who lived right next to our ancestors, they were able to be the first people that's documented in history. They beat people from India by like a thousand years. They're second place. Did a pretty good job for a certain number. Because when we were doing this in Unit 2, we would, if, we would see a number that would show up over here all the time. And when it didn't show up, we would make it show up. And notice it's even right there. We want the number zero. The number zero was invented by the Maya of Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, okay, thousands of years ago, we're going to go minus 100, there I get my zero, and the, the zero and the one are the basis for all the computer stuff we're using so that you can get these classes while we're in these times that we can't be together, so we're going to put it in order, 2x squared uh, plus 
4x minus 100. I could try to factor, but I have a feeling from in class that I'm not going to be able to. So I'm going to remind you of this certain formula that we haven't used in a while. So when we're solving for stuff, we're going to use this formula where we use the negative boy. Couldn't decide if he wanted to go to the radical party. The boy was square, so we lost out on four awesome chicks. And the whole thing, that whole pa that party was over at 2 a.m. Okay? Remember that this is A, just the number, the 2. This is B, and C is negative 100. So now I'm going to plug that in over here. I'm going to go negative B. B is a 4, so I'm going to put negative 4. Plus or minus, because I need to get two answers out of this. One of them will make sense, and one of them is going to be extra. And I'm going to have 4 squared minus the 4 that's always there. Times A is 2, and C is negative 100. Barely fit on the edge of the big sticky note. 2 times 2. I'm going to drag over my calculator. You should be able to put that all in one shot. I'm going to show you how that should be done or you can chunk it. That's up to you. So there's 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times and notice I'm going to press this one for negative 100. Press enter. These types of problems you shouldn't get a negative number there. There should be nothing with eyes. These are real numbers, regular kind of numbers. So I'm going to have this. And on the bottom, I have a 4. You can choose when you want to split it up. I'm going to choose right now. I did this during class also. So one of my answers is going to come from doing negative 4 plus the square root of 816. That's some kind of decimal thing. And I divide by 4. I'm going to put parentheses around here because I'm going to try to plug that in in one shot on the calculator in a second. The other answer I'm going to get is negative 4 minus the square root of 816 all divided by 4, parentheses around the top, just for calculator purposes. So let's plug that in. I'm going to go negative 4 plus square root of 816. Close it, close another one, divided by 4. That is 614. So here's one answer. Now I have to plug this thing into the calculator. By the way, one thing that you can do is to press second. And I want to type all that but change it up. So I'm going to go second entry. It's in yellow. Notice it copied what I just typed. And I'm going to scoot over and just change that plus to a minus. This one, not this one, will give you an error. We're choosing this minus because it's in between two number kind of things. You press enter and you get my other answer will be negative 814. Okay, now we have to take a step back and think about stuff. I have these two answers, 614, negative 814. X is over here. It's how long this part of the beak is. If I went to my bird, who now is being nice and quiet and behaved, if I went and measured its beak, would I be able to get like 614 millimeters or negative 814 millimeters? One of these answers doesn't make sense, right? Hopefully you know you can't measure negative 814. Not in physical space and any regular physics stuff. It would have to be this one. This is the answer I'm going to keep. This was extraneous. Hope this video helps you guys out. For lesson 7, unit 8, get started on that review.